Hello, hello. Welcome to another video with me. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Melissa. And if you are not new to my channel, you're probably wondering what all that plastic is in the background. So if you see the giant canvas behind me, I've had that for years and I finally know what I want to paint on it. And I'm going to be recording the entire process and it's actually going to tie back to a video that I have done before where I talk about decorating your home space based off of your moon sign. So what I'm going to be painting on there will relate to my moon sign. I'm a Cancer moon. And I'm also going to be showing like the design process of decorating my home office. But we're not going to be talking about that on today's video. That's going to be this weekend. I'm going to be talking about an aesthetic that I saw floating around on Google and it's called Audrey Core. So it is this idea and aesthetic that emulates the look and feeling of Audrey Hepburn. But much like other core aesthetics, I was wondering what would a dark Audrey Core aesthetic look like? Even though Audrey Hepburn primarily does wear a lot of blacks and neutrals, but even in her all black ensembles, she never really gives off a dark aesthetic. Like no one has ever associated her as an alternative icon or a goth adjacent style. Wearing all black doesn't always guarantee the aesthetic is going to look dark. Sometimes it just looks elegant or it looks formal. And I just had this thought like, what if you want to emulate the Audrey Core aesthetic in an alternative or dark aesthetic way? So that's what this video is going to be about. What elements you should uphold or hold on to in order to still create this idea that is still recognizable to the Audrey Core aesthetic. There are some elements that we're going to mix around, add, subtract, but we still want to uphold this idea and overall essence that feels like Audrey Hepburn. Because like I mentioned, just because you wear all black head to toe, no one's going to ever guess you're trying to emulate Audrey Hepburn. Or like if you have micro bangs, no one's gonna like automatically guess, oh, you're trying to look like Audrey Hepburn. Okay, so just a disclaimer before I get any further, this is not an Audrey Hepburn history video. I do recommend looking into some Audrey Hepburn documentaries if her life does fascinate you. She does have a fascinating history. I am a fan of Audrey Hepburn, so I have watched a lot um, and I did a lot of research for this video, but she does have a fascinating history from her childhood living in German-occupied Netherlands and um, her participation in the Dutch resistance. And then even her claim to fame is very interesting. She's a very talented individual. She has done a lot of charity work in her um, adulthood and even like her thought process behind her style and her relationship with like Givenchy and how things are tailored to her. It's very fascinating. Definitely look into it. But I'm going to mainly be focusing on her style elements, her signature style, and how to just change it a little bit to make it a darker aesthetic if that's what you're into. And even if it's not what you're into, uh, maybe this could just be an interesting, different take on how you can take an Audrey Hepburn look and still emulate it with your own personal style. So what is Audrey Hepburn's signature style? So a lot of people would describe her as very sophisticated and elegant. And even though Holly Golightly, her role in Breakfast at Tiffany's isn't anything like who she is in real life, and people often do forget that, in terms of style, I think it's actually somewhat similar to that. And that's why, or partly why, a lot of people associate the Breakfast at Tiffany's look with an Audrey Hepburn aesthetic. The reason why I say that is the designer for, um, I don't think it was all, but at least like the main black dresses that most people were familiar with, styled by Edith Head, by the way, very important figure in fashion at that time. But Givenchy was a, like a designer that she became friends with, she became very close to. So a lot of her style wasn't just like off the rack, but very tailored to her. And I think that's also what makes her look so entrancing and it looks so natural on her is because it's very tailored to her. It's tailored to her body type, her height, her um, body proportions. 
For those of you familiar with Kibi body types, she is a flamboyant gamine and she is kind of like the poster child for flamboyant gamines. And I think other gamines, like not even just flamboyant, but like even soft gamines, really look up to her in terms of aesthetics, like how things fall on her body. They use her as like a great example. I think Audrey Hepburn's aesthetic, not all, but part of it is kind of ballet core before ballet core was even a thing. And I think a good portion of that is because of her background in dance with her training in ballet. And I think the poise that you learn from being a ballerina, um, the elegance and like the softness that come with it, I think she really emulates in even the most everyday clothes. And even if Audrey Hepburn or Audrey Core is not an aesthetic that you are particularly interested in or doesn't feel like you, I think what I like about her is that a lot of things were tailored to her and she really like tried her best as much as a celebrity can hold on to that authenticity that you have and that it, it, she's like proof of the power that a signature and personal style can have. And it wouldn't be my channel to do a style analysis without delving into astrology in some shape or form. So in terms of her birth chart, she is an Aquarius rising. And you can definitely see that, especially if you watch her movies, you watch her mannerism, her body language. She's very whimsical. She's very fairy-like. And there's just something very Aquarius about that. There's something about Aquariuses that are a mix of whimsy and intellectual. I think to sum it all up, Aquarius rising aesthetic feels very collegiate with a twist. Also in Aries, Venus, which explains her natural allure. There's something about Aries placements where there's a certain charm to them. Growing up, every book that I ever read about Aries placements would always say there's always a line of suitors for you because of the natural charm that you exude. And I definitely see that for Audrey Hepburn. There were a lot of men that would pursue Audrey Hepburn and there are just a lot of people in general that want to exude the look, hence the idea of Audrey Core. Okay, so I feel like the best way to show and play around with this idea of dark Audrey Core is to break it down by her most well-known outfits and some suggestions of where you can find these elements on your own. Even if you don't want to shop at these exact ones, you don't have to, but at least you have an idea of what to look for. Okay, so for some of these outfits, I'm going to be mixing some outfits together just because there's a lot of crossover and that way you can emulate whichever one you feel the most drawn to. So for the first one, I'm going to call it the funny face beatnik look. So this was a look that she has shown before in photo shoots, different outtakes, probably audition um, like photo shoots as well. Um, in terms of movie wise, it was most prevalent in the movie Funny Face when she was in Paris and she was dancing with the beatniks. In some ways can be seen as a dark aesthetic. If you think about what beatnik culture is and the beatnik aesthetic, it is considered a counterculture. And that's actually very um, exciting to bring up just because I actually took a counterculture class in college and my professor would constantly use the beatnik culture as the example that he would always go back to in terms of our learning material. For the bottoms, we have capris. They, you can go for black skinny jeans, but I highly recommend Michelin Pitt's Vixen capris. They are a bit on the pricier side, but they are like the most amazing material. I've also seen capris at Kohl's, and even if you just Google black capris, you can find them of your choice. I just recommend the Michelin Pit one for the quality. For the funny face iteration, she does wear a black turtleneck. I have this one here from Los Angeles Apparel. Again, you can get it wherever you want. You can even thrift it. Very similar look that wasn't in funny face, but we do see it in other photo shoots. She wears this long sleeve where it's high up at the top and it has a V neck in the back. And the closest one that I can find was um, this Banana Republic deep V back sweater. I think Banana Republic's look in general, you can find a lot of key pieces that would really cater to an Audrey Core aesthetic. It's very tailored, it's very classy, and a lot of the pieces are timeless. As we see here, this is not just for this look, but an overall Audrey Hepburn 
um, true to her signature style is she was known for wearing a flat. She felt like it really accommodated to her figure. She said it really accommodated to her height. She, in my opinion, wasn't that short. So I'm five foot two and yet she seems more petite than me. And I think that's why flats really work well on her. I feel like this is where we could take like a bit of a darker aesthetic and have a little bit of fun with it. So when it comes to the top and bottom, yeah, you're wearing like an all black ensemble, but I think to make it a darker Audrey Hepburn look, it's within the accessories and the shoes. You still wanna keep it as flats, um, I recommend these Killstar Moon Flats and there's also these Strange Cult Flats. So they're, they're still ballet flats. You still have that element of the ballet core that I keep mentioning, but there are harder and edgier elements that kind of darken up this look. So for her earrings that we see in the photo shoot, you can actually find exact ones. Um, if you just look up Audrey 1950s costume earrings, I'll have it linked down below. Michelin Pitt had um, very similar shaped earrings where it was like the hanging hoop. And I think they were called the bad gal earrings on her website. I think they're sold out, but they're actually not that hard to find in terms of earrings. However, if we're taking it into a dark Audrey core aesthetic, you can have fun with this. And I feel like with this whole beatnik ensemble to give off an Audrey Hepburn look, I think you can spice it up with these cathedral hoops because when you have the capris and like the long sleeve sweater of sorts and ballet flats of your choice, I feel like the earrings are the ones that you can kind of mix and match around. And then for the hair, I think this is where it's important. I think having your hair down is you're not going to look that Audrey Hepburn. Like I have worn this look many times. No one ever guessed I look like Audrey Hepburn, right? I think it really helps to have your hair up. If your hair is slightly on the shorter side, you can go for like a small ponytail like she does in Funny Face. But if you have long hair like mine, I think pulling your hair up in a claw clip of sorts or um, bobby pinning it, I find claw clips to uphold my hair slightly better. And I found this really cool safety pin claw clip on Etsy. If you mess around with the makeup, it could still be recognizable as Audrey Corps. I think the most important elements here are the sweater, the capris, flats, and the hair. In terms of baby bangs, I'll leave that up to you. But again, I think an updo is important. For makeup, I think this overall look would look really good with a velvet black uh, lipstick or lip of your choice. I really like the Sephora brand. Um, I'm actually wearing it right now with a gloss on top. It's a very good color payoff and it's very affordable and i'm going to link down below the black one for this next look i don't think it's actually associated with a certain movie correct me down below if i'm wrong but i don't recognize it but it is a very prevalent dress look in terms of photo shoots i see it a lot on pinterest whenever you look up audrey hepburn inspiration photos and also the dress shape itself is very 1960s. It's not like the typical 1950s Dior look where it accommodates for curve. This is definitely a 1960s look where it's a little boxier, it accommodates for a straighter body shape, and it really complements Audrey Hepburn's Kibbe body type and overall proportions. So for the dress itself, I tried looking up split neck um, dresses, that's what it was called. However, you can find a similar look whenever you look at boat neck dresses. Um, the closest dress I can find that is this dress in terms of the neck shape and length is this commence boat neck um, dress. I am tempted to get it myself. Um, it looks like it's more of a satiny material, but the overall shape is there. I think you can achieve a similar look with a halter neck dress, but I think a split neck or a boat neck it's gonna feel a little more like this look. So 50s and 60s were known for kind of like matchy matchy things like um, matching your belt to your dress or to your coat, matching your nails to your lips, etc. And I think a fabric belt to match this dress is super important. I really like the fabric belt by Michelin Pitt. Probably her one, one of her more affordable pieces. I, ha I do own her belts. 
However, you can also find them on Etsy if you go vintage shopping, but if you are having a hard time finding your own fabric belt, I definitely recommend this one. The shoes, she's wearing kitten heels, very prevalent for the 1960s. You can find plain black kitten heels and it'll still be like a dark aesthetic. It'll still give off this look. However, I think you can have a little bit more fun with it. I have these witchy kitten heels and I'll have it linked down below. I think this would still look good and still emulate the Audrey Core aesthetic. Or you can take it, like turn it up a little bit and maybe wear some Demonia pumps. I really like these ones. And then for her earrings, I think this overall look would look really good with these spiderweb hoops from Etsy. I think this is, I think the most important elements of this look is the dress and matching belt. And again, the tied back, um, very clean updo hair look. And then also that arm bangle. There are several photos of her in this dress and she is always wearing this arm bangle. It's a very simple gold one, but I think, I think this snake arm bangle from Etsy can also be a good alternative look to this um, overall ensemble. I think also you can look up any arm bangle of your choice. This was just a one that I personally would wear and I think would look really cool as an overall outfit. Okay, next, I don't know if you can tell, but of the outfits that I tried to pick, I tried to pick outfits that you can wear every day, like as um, a nice daily ensemble if you want to give off an Audrey Hepburn look or dark Audrey Hepburn look. I tried my best not to pick too costumey things. Several photos in this exact outfit where she's wearing the flannel and shorts. Also going to include the blazer on top of it. Choice, of course. So for the flannel, I feel like this is such an easy thing to thrift. So I'm not even going to recommend like an exact flannel. I would definitely pick one that is not too loose or like the fabric is not too soft. As you can see with her collar, she's still able to kind of like pull it up so there should be some level of stiffness or not crunchiness but kind of like a little bit of structure to the flannel and if you see the way it's styled it's not like fully buttoned down she kind of has it um the way it's styled it's a little twisted your flannel styled like that you can do it yourself like grab one end of the flannel like diagonal tie it and then tuck it in. I hope that makes sense. And then for tailored shorts, I feel like that's another thing that you can thrift. I actually don't have shorts. That might need to be on my shopping list. Tailored shorts are not that hard to find. Um, literally easy to look up tailored shorts, pleated shorts. I personally like these ones from Pat Sun. Um, I did find ones from Banana Republic, but all the ones from Banana Republic are like semi bermuda shorts and if you look at her shorts her shorts are not that long and they're semi high-waisted so that's why i chose this pack sun one again try thrifting it it's your choice but i do recommend making sure that it is a tailored short of sorts like i don't think this look would even feel audrey hepburn if you do denim then it's going to start to feel like something else and then for the blazer for a dark aesthetic look i would really like this flannel tailor short ensemble with this disturbia blazer i i'm actually wearing the like matching pant to it um i took off the scorpion pin that you see on the blazer and i do like to put that pin on like lapels and things but overall i think this is actually a very beautiful blazer but it is a bit on the pricier side i have seen really good black blazers from Vera Wang at Kohl's. I also, every time I go thrifting, I always check the menswear blazers and there's always a good selection. So if you want to emulate this look, you can find a black blazer secondhand, no problem. And you can even tailor it to yourself. And if you do thrift a blazer or get a blazer of your choice, not from Disturbia, and you still like this brooch look, because I think that's like where it's gonna get a little edgier, it's gonna feel a little more darker, is adding like your own personal touches, like adding a chain to the lapel. Like, so you know how you have like a longer lapel for a blazer, if you have like some sort of safety pin chain to go from top to bottom, or if you add 
that Scorpion brooch. I also found alternative ones from Etsy if you don't get the Disturbia one. Even just like any brooches of your choice. Like I love spider brooches. That is like on my wish list one day. I even found this lapel pin variety pack from Etsy. It's really your choice. I think having fun with decorating blazers is what's going to make this piece a little bit edgier. All right, this one's gonna be a doozy. I cannot talk about Audrey Hepburn and not talk about how to make a darker Audrey core aesthetic of her breakfast at Tiffany's look. It is one of her most iconic looks. It is emulated in so many Halloween store costume outfits. And this was actually very interesting to delve into because her Breakfast at Tiffany's look in terms of like the actual dress replica itself is really hard to find, not as a Halloween costume, if that makes sense. Like I tried to find similar dress dupes and they were never really like quite the same, but let's talk about it. So there's this brand, I think the closest I could find that didn't feel too like costumey and you can still style it in a way for like an actual formal gathering or if you like to wear a black dress out into town was the brand utopia i think that's how you pronounce it and this entire brand actually has an entire audrey section where you can buy dress replicas um even like stuff for bridal parties and even like mom daughter matching breakfast at Tiffany's outfit costume things and I actually guiltily have bought a dress from Utopia before I bought a breakfast at Tiffany's replica I did not pay attention to the fabric material and I bought the jersey knit version of her dress and it felt horrible like it felt like a really cheap jersey fabric material that you would get from like forever 21 and because it was that material the curve of um, Audrey Hepburn's dress in that movie where she's like walking in front of Tiffany's, the jersey kind of like drags down a bit. And also, I just don't like that material on me. It just, it's not flattering. So if you want to emulate that exact look at the beginning of Breakfast at Tiffany's and you want an exact replica of that dress, Utopia is probably my best recommendation for it and I would recommend getting the satin iteration. The other dress that often gets confused for one another, oddly enough, is the dress that she wears on her way to Sing Sing's and in the movie. And it is actually a midi length cocktail dress with a fringe at the bottom, and she is wearing her very iconic lampshade hat. I think Utopia also has a very good exact replica of that fringe dress. And if you want to buy an exact like dress that is that shape, um, actually, I think it looks really good. And it's actually pretty affordable for what it, what it is. It's like 60 bucks because all the fringe dresses that I found were like 1920s costumey and it was like fringe all over. And as long as you pay attention to the material that you're buying it in, I definitely recommend getting in some sort of stiffer fabric. The jersey fabric for these kinds of dresses don't really work. In the movie poster, we have her wearing this stack of like pearl necklace and then there's like this diamond, it, like it's a very costumey type of necklace and you can obviously buy an exact replica, probably from Utopiates. Um, I've even seen some on Amazon, but we're here for a dark Audrey core aesthetic. So I think a lot of people who are into darker styles alternative fashion goth adjacent styles are vivian westwood fans and there is a very well-known vivian westwood pearl stack necklace um can't guarantee the authenticity of it if you find one good on you but there are plenty on etsy um, i feel like this is such a good way that still emulates that audrey hepburn look if you're wearing the dress and like other elements as well and the updo but you're wearing a Vivian Westwood necklace, that's where you like kind of like add your own little twist to it. Or you can kind of take a vampiric route on it and wear the very popular bloody pearl necklace. I think the main element here is like it's a stack of pearls to emulate that look. I tried finding like a black version of it, but it was really hard to find. If you can find one, let me know. 
but I actually think if I were to emulate the Breakfast at Tiffany's look, maybe I'll just go off as like a vampire Holly Golightly. I think that'd be really cool. Throughout the entire movie, she is known for wearing these sunglasses, like just throughout. So if you want to emulate the Breakfast at Tiffany's Holly Golightly look, sunglasses are huge. It's like they're the kind of sunglasses that take up half your face. You don't want to go too square or too aviator because then you're just going to look like a Kardashian. I would actually aim for something maybe a little more cat eye. It's still going to feel kind of like dark aesthetic and maybe even still true to the time period of the movie. My personal favorite sunglasses, it's a bit on the pricey side. I hope you don't think I have expensive taste. I try to make things approachable, but also I don't want to like give you guys bad quality things, if that makes sense. Nonetheless, the sunglasses I think would look amazing with this, like all of these outfits are Michelin Pitt's Batwing sunglasses. It still upholds that 1960s look that is Breakfast at Tiffany's, but it does have that dark feel to it. I think this is something that you can't really sacrifice the shape of, and you just can't use any hat. I think it has to be the kind of hat that she wears in the movie, and this specific hat is called a lampshade hat. Whenever some people do this as like a Halloween costume, they just think a wide brim hat will do it, but there it always looked off to me, and I think it's because no one actually looks up lampshade hat. So if you want to go down the cheaper route, you can do the straw version of a lampshade hat. Uh, this one's from Etsy, but if you want to stay like add a little more authenticity to it, you may want to get it in wool. And um, this one is also on Etsy. It's about $50. They can go up to like the hundreds, like some hats are like very well crafted, but this is probably the most mid range in terms of pricing for hats. We see in the movie, she has like a scarf or shawl, like a very, like a beige satiny shawl wrapped around and it's very dramatic and glamorous. Um, I think we can add a darker take on it. I found this spider web sheer shawl that you can tie around your hat um, or you could do any scarf or any fabric of your choice. Um, but I just really like this spider web motif and it definitely has like if Morticia Adams played Holly Golightly type of look. So heels are a lot more prevalent. You can wear kitten heels because that is period accurate for the 1960s. However, I think this if you're going for a dark Holly Golightly look, I think skeletal heels is a very cool take to, um, you can do any heels of your choice, but I think this skeletal heel could just be like the cherry on top. For the earrings, you can do the exact replica that she has and get at Utopia. I tried my best to find like other alternative versions, but the Utopia is probably the best replica of it they kind of i feel like it'd be really cool if someone had like the silver clay that you can mold and then like add your own random gems that's what they kind of remind me of i tried to find earrings versions of it but i couldn't and i could only find them in rings we're not trying to like copy paste holly golightly we're making a darker version of her so i think for this iteration you can do opera length lace gloves or you can do organza gloves it's still very classy and would still look good with this entire ensemble i hope you enjoyed this video i thought this was an interesting concept and i've always been like kind of mulling it over i have always loved different old hollywood looks and i do love audrey hepburn there's something very entrancing about her but as someone who is into like darker aesthetics, I've always wondered like, what would her looks look like with some of these spookier or edgier motifs? And until uh, next time, I hope you have a great week. Bye.